What's up, everybody? Welcome into the Fantasy Football Last Call. I'm your host, Doug Clemens. Here with me, as he is every Sunday, is Micah Plant. What's up, pal? Not much. How about yourself, man? Doing all right. Doing all right. Ready to get uh, this week 13 over with. Um, but before we start, give you our recaps. Please like. Please subscribe to the Fantasy Six Pack YouTube channel. We appreciate it. But like always, we're going to try to keep this one short and sweet. So we're going to jump right into things and the first game we got here is the pittsburgh steelers beating the atlanta falcons 19 to 16. um not really much to talk about here kenny pickett 13 fantasy points um Najee harris 10 ppr points decent day prior me 10 and deontay johnson 11. fortunately we finally saw the floor fall out from underneath george pickens he only saw two targets man i don't like that at all after he had three or four weeks um, in which he had over double digit fantasy points. He only had 1.2. So he killed you if you had him in your fantasy lineup. Uh, jumping over to the Atlanta side of things. Same thing. Not a whole lot going on here, guys. Michael Pruitt catches the lone touchdown for Mariota. Mariota wasn't good. 11 fantasy points. Um, Patterson and Algier split touches again in this backfield. They were both pretty efficient with it, but still didn't do anything for fantasy purpose. The big thing here was Drake London having 15 fantasy points, which you love to see. He saw 12 targets. Mike, you talked about it on the um, Sunday social live stream that this was the best possible matchup for him. And you're right, man. You hit it right on the head. 15 fantasy points, solid day. Still not that ceiling that we'd like to see, but right there, that's a good floor, and hopefully it's something to build on moving forward. Yeah, I mean, it's not exactly what I thought it would be because we needed Kyle Pitts also to be injured for this to happen. Right. For him to even reach his floor. So that's a downside. But moving on to our next game here, we had the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars heading over to Detroit to basically just lose to the Detroit Lions 40 to 14 because there was not a contest. I mean, it was over very early. Um, the Lions, Jared Goff, two touchdowns, 340 yards, 21.6 fantasy day, uh, points on the fan for fantasy. Great day. But really, the two guys that stood out were DeAndre Swift, finally having a good day, getting uh, 21.1 fantasy points, and then Amon Ross St. Brown, catching 11 of his 12 targets for 114 yards and two tutties for 34.6 fantasy points. That is just great production leading into the fantasy playoffs. We love that. Uh, Trevor Lawrence only had 14.4 fantasy points. He did finish with a touchdown, but only 179 yards. And he also had a, a pretty interesting injury that happened middle of the game. Good thing he came back. That's what we like to see. But other than that, ETN had a subpar day, only getting about 7.6 fantasy points. And then Christian Kirk was really the, the bell of the ball for this offense, catching six of his eight targets for 104 yards. No touchdown, only getting 16.4. That was Evan Ingram getting that touchdown, finishing with 14 on the day. Uh, a big takeaway from this is, man, I, I Trevor Lawrence, if he's not healthy, I'm curious to see how this offense bodes because it was not very good. They gave up early. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you like to think he was okay, but it's a very, very scary injury. The Jags yeah. are just so bad on the road. It's kind of a weird thing. If you go look at their splits, you'll know what I'm talking about. You're going to be like, what the hell? But It's almost like it, he's a rookie quarterback again. <laughs> it, right, right. Jump it over to uh, the next game we got here. The oldest rivalry in the NFL, the Packers like they do every single year beat the bears 28 to 19 start with the packers offense didn't have to really do a whole lot man aaron Rodgers only 11 fantasy points but aj Dillon was a story in the backfield with it seemed like Aaron jones was banged up he only got nine attempts yes. but aj Dillon 18 for 93 and a touchdown and also caught all three of his targets finished with 20 ppr points christian watson man six targets catches a touchdown for his fourth straight uh, 24 PPR points, and Alan Lazard was also solid, 5 for 67. So it was, um, it was good to see both of the wide receivers put up numbers in a game in which Rodgers only threw for 182 yards. Um, but jumping over to the Bears side of things, Justin Fields, dude, he breaks another 50-yard touchdown run that really saves his day um, for fantasy-wise. He has 21 fantasy points, but instead rushing floor, we love to see it. Um, David Montgomery, 14 attempts for 61 yards and a touchdown caught for his five targets. Uh, finished with 16 PPR points. Every time against the Packers, guys, he hits. Um, it wasn't a huge ceiling day, but it was a very solid day for him. Um, the pass catcher is really the only guy that we need to talk about and the only guy who's relevant in this offense now with Darnell Munia is Cole Komet, who caught six to seven targets for 72 yards. So he is a very solid 
back of the uh, or back of the row back to your tight end one who if he scores a touchdown for you in a week he could finish in the top five which most any tight end back <laughs> But we'll move on to our next game here then. This was a real slog of a game. I mean, Denver Broncos going on to Baltimore to face the Ravens. And the Ravens pull it out with a 10-9 to victory. Uh, Lamar Jackson did leave this early. I believe it was in the second quarter with a knee injury. John Harbaugh did say it was day to weeks, whatever that means. So monitor that. <laughs> um, but Tyler Huntley came in. And he, he, I mean, he had an all right day for a backup. Uh, he, no, no touchdowns besides his one rushing touchdown. Um coming away with 16.6 fantasy points. That was really, I mean, the only one you can get away with starting in this offense, but no one started Tyler Huntley because you started Lamar Jackson. So, I mean, outside of this, there was really nobody to start in this offense. I mean, Mark Andrews, yes, because of the tight end position. He had 9.4 fantasy points, catching four for 53. I mean, Demarcus Robinson had seven target, uh, seven catches for 41 yards, so only 11.1. Duvernay, six for 34, only 10.3. So nothing really here offensively. Or fantasy wise, Russell Wilson, eh, day, ten point uh, nine point seven fantasy points. Latavius Murray couldn't even cash in on getting a touchdown this week. Um, Corlin Sutton did go down with an injury. He did leave early, and then that really kind of left Greg Dolchich, Dolchich leading, leading to be the target leader here with eight catching six for eighty five, finishing with fourteen point five fantasy points. Really, that was. I mean, Jerry Judy had four for sixty five, but it was it was abysmal all around in this game. Yes, it was. Uh, jumping into our next one, we got the Eagles beating the Titans 35-10 to in just a blowout. Jalen Hurts, monster day. Um, he had four total touchdowns, 34 fantasy points. A.J. Brown, revenge game, man. Catching eight to ten targets for 119, two touchdowns. One sick touchdown. And Devonta Smith hit as well, catching five balls for 102 and a touchdown. He had 21 PPR points. A.J. Brown had 31 PPR points. The only person that really disappoint was Miles Sanders, but he still found the he still found the end zone and still finished with eleven PPR points. So you really can't hate anything here. Um, so it was good to see the Titans really struggled in this game, which was surprising because they're really well well coached, man. But they were outmatched in this one. Tannehill only thirteen fantasy points. Derrick Henry shut down. He finished with only five point eight fantasy points, and their leading receiver was a Conquell, their tight end. Yeah. So. Traylon Burks did catch a touchdown, nine and a half PPR points, but he got rocked on that touchdown and had to be taken out of the game for possible concussion reasons. Um, yep. Hopefully he's good to go next week. Uh, prayer up to him. Um, hopefully, hopefully he's good. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, you know, you know, as well as I do, if this offense, if Derrick Henry struggles, man, this offense is going to struggle. And that's exactly what happened in a tough matchup against the Eagles. Bingo. Yep. Uh Easy, easy said. <laughs> Moving on to our next game, we had the Cleveland uh, Browns going and visit the Houston Texans for the rematch for the Deshaun Watson Bowl. Um, I mean, Cleveland came out on top, uh, on top, twenty-seven fourteen. But let's be honest, that was just a fucking terrible game for Deshaun Watson. One um, offensive touchdown the entire game, Mike, for both teams. Yep. Three <laughs> special, uh, three special teams slash defense touchdowns. Which I mean, you do what you can to win, but. That's not going to win many weeks in the NFL if, if, if you're doing that. You need the quarterback to step up, which Deshaun Watson did not. Um, Nick Chubb did not have a good day. Eight fantasy points. I mean, really, it was kind of the resurgence of Kareem Hunt a little bit with 9.4 fantasy points. And then you had Donovan Peoples-Jones catching three for 44. And uh, uh, catching that, uh, getting that punt return for a mm -hmm. touchdown that really mm -hmm. boosted his score over double digits. That was the only thing here. I mean, other than that, the Texans just abysmal. You don't want to start really anybody from this team, even though Damian Pierce finally got it going. 73 yards on the ground. Good uh, matchup for him, though. Yeah, good matchup, but 73 yards on the ground. He got three targets, two for 22, so he finished with 12.5. I mean, in a great matchup, that still sucks. So I don't know yep. if I want this, this you know, offense, really. I mean, Nico Collins got the touchdown, would be... 12.5 fantasy points. But other than that, this was just a bad game all around. Yes. Yes, it was the next game we got here, guys. This one was kind of a thriller. Minnesota beats the Jets 27 to 22. <laughs> Kirk Cousins, pedestrian day 11 fantasy points. Delvin Cook finds the end zone uh, 86 yards on 20 attempts. 
uh, finishes with 16 PPR points. So you're happy with that. Alexander Madison also scores one of the touchdowns um, on a nice longer run for 9.8 fantasy points. So he was solid. Justin Jefferson showing out for yeah. 11 on or 7 on 11 for 45 yards and a touchdown, 18 PPR points. Perfectly fine. He'll take that anytime. Um, and TJ Hawkins had only catching four of his six targets for 33 yards. Um, but the guys you needed to hit in this offense that you started hit. Uh, if you started Kirk Cousins, sorry about that. It wasn't a wasn't a good matchup really to be starting him though. Um, but jumping over to the Jets side of things, man, and this offense is rolling a little bit. Mike White, they're letting him just throw it around the yard, man. 57 attempts. Didn't find the end zone, though. He threw two interceptions. Um, he did find an end zone rushing-wise, sorry. He finished with uh, 19 and a half fantasy points. Uh, Zonovan Knight was okay. 15 attempts, 90 yards. Did not find the end zone. Um, he finished with 16.8 PPR points. So if you started him, you were happy. But the story of the day was Garrett Wilson seeing 15 targets, catching eight of them for 162. Um, and then Corey Davis, five for 85. He was all right. But Mike, biggest takeaway here is Mike White has made this offense relevant and Garrett Wilson is a set it and forget it at least wide receiver three with a ton of ceiling each week. Uh, I wouldn't say each week, but uh, yes, high floor, high floor with Mike White. The ceiling is where I, you know, because you need touchdowns. That's that's what you get you to see. You just scored 24 right. points without a touchdown, though. That's what I, that's what you Great like to floor. see. Love that. Great love floor. That. Reminds me of Cooper Cup with that type of numbers. No touchdown yeah, and getting 24 points. But moving on to our next game, which we can actually go pretty quickly here because let's be honest, guys. This isn't football. This is football. We don't like ties. We had the Washington uh, Commanders taking on the New York Giants, and they finished in a 20-20 tie. I, 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 I think the Commanders were fo- totally fine with it. They yep. were totally fine with it. Uh, but Taylor Heineke had two touchdowns, 275 yards. Actually had a decent day, uh, 17.6 fantasy points. Ryan Robinson didn't get 100 yards on the ground, only 96, finishing with uh, 13.1 fantasy points. And then really the story of the day was Terry McLaurin, just like it has been with uh, Taylor Heineke as a starter, catching eight of his 12 targets for 105 yards. He's got, he got a touchdown, finishing it out with 24.5 fantasy points. Jahan Dotson even gra- secured a touchdown, getting five of his 54 targets. Finishing with 16.5 uh, four fantasy points. I mean, we can jump over the Giants, but it was it was pretty much Saquon Barkley, Darius Slayton, and then you can count Isaiah Hodges in there if you really want to. But that's only because he got the touchdown, the only touchdown that Daniel Jones threw. So I mean, Barkley got the touchdown on the ground, 14. Uh, I mean, uh, 19.1 fantasy points because he also got five catches, and then Darius Slayton had six for uh, 90 getting those long catches for some reason finishing with 15.0 fantasy points but that was pretty much it I right, this 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 i mean barkley terry yep. mclaurin and it <laughs> that is it the next game we got here is a game that was better than we anticipated seahawks win at 27 23 Gino smith good solid day for him 24 fantasy points big story here was ken walker getting a little banged up here so something to keep an eye on dj dallas actually led this team in rushing attempts but the receiving options man you get a touchdown you get a touchdown you get a touchdown tyler lockett dk metcalf no offense each find the end zone tyler lockett dk both blow up here 26 to 27 ppr points which is great to see um gino smith support two wide receivers man the year 2022 just wild mike <laughs> but jumping over to the half side of things wofford was better than bryce perkins still and this offense showed uh, but it still wasn't great. He threw two picks, eight fantasy points. Cam Akers falling in the end zone two times, which is nice to see. Um, still was inefficient as always. That's that's a shtick, I guess. Uh, three and a half yards per carry, 17 to 10. Keywords falling. Yards, but you, you like to see <laughs> the volume at least. And then these pass catchers, man, nothing really to write home about. Um, yeah. Powell, I guess, 12 PPR points. And that's because he bo- broke a big run. But you're not starting any of these guys. Higby. You can in a pinch, but even he only caught two balls on five targets. This offense just isn't great. But I guess if there's someone to roster here the rest of the season, Mike, it's got to be Cam Akers, right? But he's more of just a bench depth piece in case of emergencies. Do you want to play him? Because he is the RB1 in this offense. Yeah, just I mean, it's just a bad offense with bad players all around. I mean, you got no starting QB, no starting wide receiver. And let's be honest, Cam Akers, is he a starting running back? 
All right, on to our next game, which is a really good, I mean, good one on paper here. It did not turn out to be as well in uh, the actual game time, but we had the Miami Dolphins taking on the San Francisco 49ers, and the Niners came out on top 33-17. I mean, the big news here, Jimmy Garoppolo going down with a broken foot. He will be yeah. done for the rest of the year, leaving Mr. Irrelevant Brock Purdy as your starting quarterback for the Niners moving forward. I did see they did sign Josh Johnson off of the practice squad for Houston, I believe it was. Which is this guy's going to play for every insane. damn team in his career. He should have been playing for Houston over Kyle Allen, but that's just my opinion. Um, uh, I agree. <laughs> but here's here's what we got for the Niners. Christian McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey, and, oh, yeah, some more Christian McCaffrey. Finishing with 28.6 fantasy picks, getting 10 targets, catching eight of them for 80, getting a touchdown there, also getting 17 attempts on the ground, getting 66 rushing yards. It's a great day to be a CMC owner. Um, you had Debo Samuel get also another 10 targets, six receptions for 58 yards, 12.3 fantasy points. I mean, Ayuk really kind of struggled, five for 46, only getting 9.6. It was, it was CMC's day. I mean, you're going to have that when you have a, a player like CMC. So moving yeah. on to the Dolphins here. I mean, Jeff Wilson, I, I he must have gotten hurt because he only got one attempt, leaving Raheem Mostert in there. Or it was just a, you know, abandoned the game plan situation. But it was Tyree Kill all day. I mean, because Jalen Waddle did get hurt a little bit. He did manage to come back. But it was Tyree Kill all day, getting 14 targets, nine receptions for 146 yards, one touchdown, 26.6 fantasy points. And then Trent Sherfield had one catch in the like the first play of the game for a yeah, well, <laughs> it was 14.5 fantasy points. It's just fake, fake points right there. Except if you're for Tua, those are real. <laughs> yeah, Tua, I guess it counts. But man, you're not, you're not chasing uh, Trent Sherfield. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. But. Uh... The next game here, guys, we got this one was a thriller. The um, rematch of the AFC Championship game. Bengals have their number three in a row over Kansas City, 27. Three, three in a row by three points. That's the weird Crazy. thing. All three Crazy. games have been by three, and they've all been 24 to 27. Wild, man. Joe Burrow, huge day, 30 fantasy points, two through the air, one on the ground. Samaj P. P Ryan. Great once again, 21 PPR points, seeing seven targets in the passing game. Jamar Chase comes back, he, very solid, seven for 97 on eight targets, 16 PPR points. Um, Higgins is the one catching the touchdown. Good thing he did, saved his fantasy day, finished with 12 and a half PPR points. Um, and Tyler Boyd, man, I don't know if you saw early in the game dropping a wide open touchdown, but oh, yeah. this may sound weird, Mike. He might be better with Jamar Chase in the lineup, though, because he's in the slot the entire time. You know what I mean? It's It it, it almost sets up better for him. He did see five targets, which is nice to see. Um, jumping over to the Chiefs side of things, Mahomes only 27 attempts, um, one touchdown. He uh, finished with 19.8 fantasy points, so it was a fine day. Just wasn't a great ceiling day like you'd hope to see. Isaiah Pacheco finds the end zone. Sees the volume, even sees two targets in the passing game and 16 PPR points. Um, MVS talk about a guy dropping another touchdown. He dropped one as well, but caught two balls for 71 yards. Was their leading receiver. Kelsey Quiet gave four for 56. Um, but I should mention Jarek McKinnon, eight for 51, and he was also involved in the passing game, catching two, and he had 14 PPR points. Um, but my biggest takeaway here is. I guess Pacheco, Mike? I don't know. Juju had a quiet day. Pacheco, you like to see the 14 attempts, getting a little bit more involved in the passing game, and he's going to have opportunities to fall in the end zone weekly because he's a part of the, a really good offense. Let's see. Oh, big time, big time. All right, so we'll move on to our next game here. We had the uh, Los Angeles Chargers taking on the Las Vegas Raiders, and the Va Raiders came out on top here, 27-20. I mean, we'll talk about the Chargers real quick. Herbert kind of struggled for the day. Early in the beginning, but he, you know, managed to have an all right day. One touchdown, eighteen point one fantasy points. But it was Keenan Allen on this offense, and that was it. Austin Eckler let everybody down this week. I mean, he had thirteen point two fantasy points. I mean, which in his uh, production is a letdown. Yeah. So I mean, still, still a solid floor week. But Keenan Allen was the one who had the day. Six for eighty-eight, hundred uh, one touchdown, twenty point eight fantasy points. Really, that was it. It was Eckler and. Uh, Keenan Allen, Gerald Everett had some, you know, sprinkle targets in there for a tight end, five for 80, but other than that, not much. We'll move on to the Raiders side of the things here where Devontae Adams and Josh Jacobs are shouting out. All right, Josh Jacobs finishing with 
fantasy points after his marvelous week last week. And then you got Devontae Adams catching eight of his 12 targets for 177 yards and two touchdowns. 37.7 fantasy points. The guy's a monster. He is him. Um, I mean, I, I'm actually shocked the Raiders won here, but when you got players like Jacobs and Adams going off, they are just must starts. I mean, they're the wide receiver know. one and running back one of fantasy yes. football right now, the last two weeks. Right and until, until it changes moving forward, that's what you got to roll with. It's wild, man. It is wild. But yeah, guys, that was our last game. So that wraps up the fantasy football last call. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Go check out all our, our other content coming this week for week 14, guys. The last week before most of our fantasy playoffs start. Pretty, pretty crazy that this is already here. But uh, hopefully you guys uh, win your matchups. And if you need a Monday Night Miracle, I hope you get it. But until next time, um, for Michael Plant, I'm Dylan Clements. We'll talk to you guys next week.